but it's like so important to have a solid thumbnail mm -hmm. and put thought into it because you can make like the sickest YouTube review video ever. Right. But if your title and thumbnail suck, yeah. no one's gonna care. No one's crazy. Cares. I don't have my Grab it. Yeah, I don't have my it's totally coffee. This is for sure coffee yeah. and nothing else. Mm -mm. This is uh Caffeine. Hey, howdy guys, Connor McCaskill <laughs> here with Cameras and Coffee. Joining me again is Zach Mayfield. How you doing? And today, I'm gonna sit down my coffee mug. Okay. Which has coffee in it. Right. Today, we're gonna be going over our process for creating a YouTube video. Right, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. I, I'm prepared for this. <laughs> yeah, okay, me too. So, Zach, you have been running the Kanatika channel, the Kanatika <laughs> channel. Kanatika. For over a year now. Yes. And have you had to work on and change your process from your personal channel to Kinetika, or have you just kind of carried over your original method? I've had to develop my method for sure, because now I'm basically just making reviews. Like most of the content I make on both channels is reviews. Mm -hmm. Occasionally there's like a photo vlog or something where it's more run and gun, like off the cuff style. Sure. But yeah, I have like a pretty set process now. And you've been like working with me a lot too. So we have a set process. Okay. We're together, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that's right. You heard it here first. So since we're making mostly product-based videos, that's gonna be kind of what we're going over is how we concept, develop, and then edit, export out a product-centric video. So when it comes down to concepting or even just coming up with ideas, what does that look like for you? Yeah, I mean, so we're in the camera tech space. Mm -hmm. So obviously what you wanna be doing to be quote unquote successful on YouTube is reviewing the most relevant recent new gear. For us, it's not always possible because we yeah. are working on small YouTube channels. We don't have all the big boy, big girl connections mm -hmm. of getting like, you know, pre-release Sony and Canon stuff, you know? Right. So ideally, I mean, you pick a product that you think is gonna do well or that you will enjoy reviewing and then start by just testing that bad boy out. So that is definitely one of the issues we have is getting our hands on stuff because for instance, let's just say the Canon EOS R3, mm -hmm. right? There is a set list of people that will get their hands on that camera, i.e. Peter McKinnon, maybe Matty Apoya, who knows who else, right? Armando. Yeah. They're gonna get their hands on that before the camera even becomes available for us regular people. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I feel like such a noob because I see my YouTube feed get blasted with all these like NDA lifted videos. Yeah. It's like, oh, cool. That camera came out. Yeah. Wish I had it. Yeah. You, you'll know what day the NDA got lifted because there's like 35 videos yeah. about any given product. So it does become a bit harder for us. Something that we've tried to do, I believe, is think outside the box when it comes to video. So not always just doing Sony A7S III review. Yeah. But in the case with your recent video, we found uh, our buddy Jake Bernal had the Canon R5. You saw him in the last cameras and coffee. And then we compared the two cameras one year later and kind of talked about that. Yeah. I mean, there's value in revisiting products. And I think a lot of people, myself included, get kind of burnt out with hearing about all the latest and greatest all the time because mm -hmm. it makes your freaking wallet start to swell up and <laughs> shoot out of your pocket yeah. straight into Amazon or B&H. Oh, yeah. We can't be doing that all the time. Mm -mm, yeah. So it's nice to either like revisit an older piece of tech or like you said, come at a camera review or comparison from a different angle and like try to provide value in a unique way. And yeah, it's fun. It's a fun challenge really like coming up with ideas in the camera space. Right. It's, it's a good time. We're so trying. Do you then come up with your title and thumbnail before you shoot the video? Does that come in the middle? Does that come at the end? What does that look like? Yeah, I feel like me and you brainstorm titles yeah. quite a bit. I feel like we're getting to the point where we like communicate in YouTube titles. It's yeah. like Canon R5, does it explode? <laughs> oh, hey Connor. But yeah, I feel like we brainstorm a general idea for a title, like kind of get it locked in and then build the video around that. And then usually me and you are like at the end, oh yeah, thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And then we create like a, a banger thumbnail that tries to convey the message of the video. Right. Yeah, that's something that actually we could probably improve at is the thumbnail game because when it comes down to it, that is essentially like the, the cover art for your video. And if people aren't enticed to click on it, 
no one's ever gonna see your video, no matter how nice it is. So, but it's hard, it's hard to remember because you're too busy thinking about the actual content of the review, which is a good thing, because we want it to be right. as good as possible. But then we're like, oh, dang, dangus, gotta <laughs> shoot photo. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, we've talked about this a lot, but it's like so important to have a solid thumbnail mm -hmm. and put thought into it because you can make like the sickest YouTube review video ever. Right. But if your title and thumbnail suck, yeah. no one's gonna care. No one it's crazy. cares. Yeah, no, actually I'm curious. So if you guys are watching this in the comments, let me know. For me personally, I almost don't read titles that much. I don't know about you. I, I tend to just like see a thumbnail I like and just kind of go on it from there. Or I'll read the thumbnail, because a lot of times it'll be text. And if that interests me, then maybe I'll read the title. Yeah. The title to me is almost not as important. Yeah, I feel like our eyes, especially on YouTube, Instagram, like our social media world today, our eyes are just like naturally driven to that next image. Right. And then I think if it impresses our brain, we're like, okay, go up to the title. Right. Does it fit together? Okay, click. Exactly. It's like those three big decisions just to get one little <laughs> view. It's and so that's hard. our whole life. I know. It's crazy. It can be very overwhelming. Yeah. But I think that's why we develop a process that hopefully is efficient mm -hmm. and like not causing us to worry all the time. Sure. And at the end of the day, it's like you do your best with what you have, like work hard and some are going to hit, some are not. Right. Most of them for me, not, <laughs> but we're working on it. Yeah. Every single one from here on out, banger. Yeah, baby. That's a promise. That's, uh, what is the, that's what Tim the Tap Man says all the time. He's like, I got a banger for you yeah. today. <laughs> every single video. I got a banger for you today. <laughs> we got a banger for you today. Hey, Kevin. But okay, so thumbnail, title, all that stuff aside, when we're actually working through the process of creating it, what's what's that look like? Are we you know using the product for a long period of time? Do we get it reviewed in one day? Does it depend on what we're talking about? What's that look like? Yeah, I guess let's talk about like ideal scenario sure. in a review. So let's say we get the Canon R7 in the mm. mail. Basically, I would be like, all right, Connor, we got the R7 today. We take it out and we just go shoot with it a bunch. And while we're shooting, we're like looking for quirks, looking for things we like. You know, ideally we're taking notes or right. mental notes most of the time. Mental notes, we yeah. Need to, we should bring a notebook. <laughs> yeah, analyzing all that while you're shooting and hopefully getting multiple solid days right. of shooting, but sometimes you just get one depending on if you're working with a company on a right. product and you have to send it back on loan or whatever. But basically, we'll get all of our findings, put it back into the computer, you know, do a bunch of test grading, like just looking at the image, pixel peeping. Right. And then that's, for me, where I start building the script upon that. Right. So you actually script your videos. Yeah, for reviews, they're pretty much all scripted just because it's a lot more fun for me. I like to like work really hard on the front end of like writing a creative script, maybe writing a sketch to go in there with it to make it right. kind of a, a, a hook in the beginning of the video. And then when it comes time to record, <laughs> my cat just jumped off the Hello, kitty. shelf. <laughs> <laughs> See you, brother. And then when it comes time to record the video, then I don't have to be like trying to remember all those mental notes, you know, or checking my notebook. It's just on a script and I can deliver it in a fun way and then edit, I guess. Yeah, and honestly, when it comes to scripting, not scripting, using bullet points, there's technically no right way to do it. I've yeah. worked with a number of YouTubers now. I worked with Dave Mays, uh, who originally hosted Kinotika. I worked with Armando Ferreira. I did. And now I work with you, the new host of Kinotika. And I each mean. one did it different. For Dave, he could almost always go just off the cuff. Yeah. He had a really good, good memory. Yeah, he could just spout out specs like crazy. And it worked really well. For Armando, he tended to have almost more of a bullet point kind of a system. Mm -hmm. For the most part, sometimes it would vary. Sometimes we'd write it more out. Sometimes we wouldn't, depending on the video. But for the most part, Nice. Thanks. For the most part, we um, we both pointed it out. And now with working with Zach, it's been a lot more scripting based. And I think they all have their merits. I I personally really like the scripting method because I feel like it can be a lot tighter. There's a lot less fluff. Yeah. And it's easy to forget a spec, at least for me. Like mm -hmm. I know Dave's super good at just like having that burned into his mind. He's yeah. like a human like B&H listing. <laughs> yeah. So good at just pulling those out and be like, oh yeah, this camera does these yeah. things. And for me, I'm like... Yeah, I know it shoots a picture or two. Yeah, but big, good picture, probably. <laughs> Dude, so much of my script writing is spent, like, looking through B&H specifications yeah. lists. But, yeah, it's different for every person. And I think it's good to kind of test different methods of shooting videos and sure. find what fits your personality. Right. For me, I can be more alive and vibrant on camera. 
when I'm not worried about, oh, I gotta remember this stuff. Mm -hmm. I can just like have fun because I already did the work up front. Okay, now let's get into more of that post-production workflow, right? Fun. Yeah. <laughs> this is the this is the part where it comes <sighs> together. The glue. Well, well, first off, let's go over like editing. So what what software are we using? I'm using Premiere Pro. Uh oh. And all those Ooh. all those Da Vinci Dingle Ooh. boys out there telling me to switch, dude. <laughs> you're probably right. But yeah. am I gonna do it? No, because I'm a stubborn ass. I'm, I'm right there with you. I love Premiere. <laughs> I actually really like it. And we're both on M1 MacBook Pros now, mm -hmm. and they've recently done the M1 update. But even before that, like the past few months, I've had zero issues. I have had very minimal crashes and stuff, mm -hmm. and it's more powerful than my old iMac. So I'm sitting breezy, baby. I'm having a good time. Yeah. DaVinci's probably awesome, but I would rather use DaVinci to color grade, but I'm not obsessed with like, spending all my time color grading. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not trying to make Hollywood films. I'm just, I'm making YouTube vids, making them look as good as I can in Premiere, bam, shipping them off. Yeah, but that's the thing with YouTube is that it's, I mean, for the most part, I will say, it's not typically a film that you're making. Yeah. I so say there are some people who do that, right? Yeah, there's but, some dang good YouTube like filmmakers. Yeah, 100%. But more or less what we're doing is we're making weekly content. And when it comes down to weekly content, speed is king. So like yeah. you said, we're making it as nice looking, as fun, as interactive, as engaging as possible in a limited amount of time. And when you think about the fact that like you and I are making two like pretty in-depth videos per week on yeah. average, if we took the time to switch to DaVinci, learn it or set it up to be like Premiere, mm -hmm. that's potentially a week or two weeks of our time learning and becoming as fast of editors as we are in Premiere. And like, I literally can't afford to do that. No. I can't, I can't at this we'd point We'd have to get like life. super ahead or something. That'd be yeah, dumb. we'd have to have like a month of backup content just to maybe switch programs. And I'm fine in Premiere, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, it, honestly with the new updates, it's not, it's really not that bad. Yeah. Like, I, I, I know it's like, it's the joke. It's like, oh, it's slow. Oh, it always crashes, which it did crash on me last <laughs> week, ironically <laughs> enough. But I didn't, I didn't lose anything, yeah. so You're fine. Yeah, we're good. I'm actually editing in Final Cut a little bit as well for some clients, and I, I, you know, I used to be a fan of Final Cut. I used to edit in it daily, all the time, and now that I've gone to Premiere, going back, I don't know if it's just because I've forgotten. <laughs> I don't Maybe. feel like I should have forgotten, but I, I guess I have. It, it is rough to just switch editors. It just is. Yeah. I think it's like just what you're comfortable in and what you can be the most efficient in, make the best stuff in. Just use that and then keep your opinion to yourself. <laughs> That's right. Be quiet. <laughs> Even though we're giving all of our opinions. Yeah. <laughs> that's the YouTuber that's way. That's the YouTube way, baby. Yeah, that's right. We turn off comments, but we tell you exactly <laughs> what we think. Okay, now let's go to post, post-production. Back on the YouTube thing. Do you have a schedule? Kind of, yeah. So right now it's like Monday mornings, 9 a.m. for Kino Tika, and right. I'm trying to do Thursday mornings at 9 a.m. for the Zach Mayfield channel. Sometimes it can differ if you're working with a, a company and maybe you are doing like an embargo project sure. where as soon as it lifts, you want to post it that second. So it might be a random day. But I mean, for the YouTube algorithm gods and everything, mm -hmm. I'm trying to be consistent. You've helped me with that too. Yeah. I don't know. It's not, it's not easy. No, it's not. Yeah. YouTube actually gives you analytics in your creator studio that shows you when a majority of your viewers are watching in a particular day. Yeah. So that's actually how we've based when Zach uploads various videos for the most part. I think we've also kind of considered the fact that we don't want Kinetika videos and ZM videos that uploaded on the same day. Yeah, so kind of spread them out so like kind of boost the hype train throughout the week. Exactly, because honestly, the more content you can make in the week, the better, but that's terrible for this part of your body. Yeah, if you want to live a sad life. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't do daily or anything like that. It's just not at the quality I want to make things at. Right. Like even weekly for two channels is pushing it. I feel like I'm always like, well, we made it this week. Yeah. It's it's never like we're super ahead or anything. Yeah, 100%. Now, do you do anything to promote your work or do you just upload and that's it? I, dude, I'm trying to freaking use Instagram more. Yeah. Like now that we have your iPad in the studio, I try to post a photo on the day that I make a video, but I try not to obsess over it that much. Like do what I can post on Instagram. 
all my stuff automatically posts in my Discord, which is super fun and I'm way more active in there and that gives the videos like a little boost on the front end because all my homies in there are helping so, out. Yeah, go join Zach's <laughs> Discord if you want to chat about camis pretty or, fun. or memes or gaming. Literally anything, it's pretty Liter sick. It's, it's actually pretty cool. I can't keep up though. Yeah, I can't either. Some days I get in there and like people have talked all day and it's like, I want to know what you said, but I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to read it either. I love you though, baby. But another part of like the post post process yeah. is, is making that thumbnail. Okay. And sometimes we're spending an hour, two hours in Photoshop, mm -hmm. like adjusting the vibrance and making cutouts and drop shadows and adding arrows. <laughs> arrows are good. Yeah. They work. Well. They say it's good. I don't know. I've, I've thrown some arrows in my thumbnails yeah. for sure. I'm definitely a big fan of like the really clean, just punchy, simple photo. Right. That looks really nice. I think Maddie Hapoya's thumbnails are amazing. Mm -hmm. They're just like a really nice looking, basically Instagram feed. Yeah. This is like thumbnails. I, I'm a big fan of that kind of style, but I like the minimalist kind of thing. Okay. One more thing I kind of want to cover. Sponsorships. Yes. Getting money for videos or even just getting a product for a video. You know, like for instance, you have a relationship with Fujifilm now, mm -hmm. which is pretty sick, right? I love you Fuji so much, seriously. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but what does that, what does that mean for the content? Yeah. In your case. Well, let's rewind a little bit. So we're in a really cool space of YouTube where you, you're doing like product reviews. Mm -hmm. So let's say you buy like a camera and review it. That's actually like really good for the algorithm and stuff like that. Because once you start posting reviews and you like include your email and your description and everything, you're going to start receiving emails. And a lot of them are going to be like bullshit emails that make no sense. And yeah. it's from languages you've never even seen on this planet. But once in a while, something comes through and they're like, hey, can we send you this lens? We, we liked your video. Do you want to make a review? And maybe they'll give you a lens for free. Sometimes you have to send it back. Yeah. But you got to start making reviews to like start that train. And I sure. think you got to enjoy reviews to really want to do it mm -hmm. um, because it's such a specific type of video creating. Sure. Um, but all that to say, like the longer you do it and the more consistent you are and hopefully enjoying it, um, I think eventually like other people and companies will see that. And that's when maybe someone like Fuji, mm -hmm. like they just reached out to us like a couple months ago and I was like, Who's in my email, dude? <laughs> this never happens. Yeah. And it's not like they're like, have all of our cameras for free. Yeah. But they've been loaning us like the XE4, the X100V, yep. some lenses. I think it's right. Grab that little son of a gun. Yeah. The Fuji XE4, the 50 F1, the 18 1.4. Right. And we get them for like just a couple weeks and we send them back. But it's a total blessing and it gives us like multiple pieces of content to make mm -hmm. and it's just fun. It is totally fun. We also both really like Fuji, so. Oh yeah, Fuji juicers for sure. I wanna kinda get into more like the morality of it or like honesty yeah. when it comes to reviews. Does it taint the video? Yeah, so far where I'm at in my YouTube career, which is still the very beginning, I kinda see two paths. One is like, hey, we liked your video. Can we send you this lens and you review it? And it's like, okay, cool. You sent me the lens for free, but you're not paying me. So I'm going to say like, whatever I want, mm -hmm. no matter what, if it sucks, I'm going to say it sucks. Cause ultimately for me, I try to make everything about the viewer, right. like while also having a good time. Cause I want to have yeah, fun. Of course. And then there's the other path, which is, Hey, we want to do an integration or a sponsored video where, you know, maybe they'll pay you to review the product. And that can get kind of dicey. Sure. Um, and I know there's some creators that don't take any payment for gear, which I respect a lot, but we're at the point where we really need the money mm -hmm. to like work together. Yeah. So in those instances, which happen pretty rarely right now, right. Um, I try to be upfront with them and say, yes, we'd love to do a sponsored video with you if we want to, but we're going to make it with our genuine opinions in mind. And then obviously like there's the whole process similar to working with a client for videos where you send them the video and then they approve it essentially. Right. Like a client for a wedding or a commercial would sure. do. Yeah. So that's kind of my method right now. Yeah, I, I remember doing sponsored videos in the past. And one thing that we would always try to do is like, if something was wrong with the product, for example, the Canon R5, it overheated, right? Mm -hmm. Now that wasn't paid videos at the time, but even still, you know, it's like, we said it, we said, yes, the Canon R5 overheated. Oh, it slowed down our production, all that stuff. But then we always try to add like a little last, like thing of redemption, like, but 
this is potentially something that they could fix with firmware in the future. Which is true. It that, is true. We're not, not a lie. Not at all. We're just, we're always trying to like, you know, bring it back around so that it doesn't, it's not as, as much of a sting, you know? We're not yeah. sitting there just railing on the product. I feel like as long as you're keeping the viewer and the potential buyer in mind, and you really are saying what you're saying for their ultimate benefit, right? that's kind of our job. Sure. You know, while still making a living and, you know, trying to put food on our tables. Right. So it's a very interesting, like, moral and ethical balance that we have to find. But I do think it's possible to oh, yeah. be honest um, and still, like, make it good for the viewer. Well, awesome, Zach. Thanks so much for being on another episode <laughs> of Cameras and Coffee. You're yes. the first returning guest. Yes, dude. <laughs> Probably return again. Yes, thank you guys. <laughs> I know there's been a lot of requests to have me back yeah, on the show. Yeah, it's true. So thank you so much, first of all. <laughs> That's uh, it's a big honor. <laughs> yeah, for Big, sure. big honor guy right here. Yeah, but anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you got something out of it, and I will see you guys whenever I make another video. Take it easy, guys. Bye.